No. All right. So we got um, just a quick recap from last week. So what we'll do today is uh, we're actually going to do everything from a standing position. So you can pop up. Um, and what I want you to do is I want you to define like your, what I'll call set position. All right. Your set position. So this is going to be your standing slash resting position. Um, and um, like pick, pick something for your hands. Like I, you know, what do I do with my hands? Um, I, I kind of just like, like this right here. Um, you could, you could do whatever you want as long as you're consistent. Cause when we start getting into these like breath holds, you want to come back to this, whatever this is for you, this nice, calm, composed, uh, set position. All right. So, uh, in this position, I'll just do a quick refresh. I built that house that I was talking about the, uh, the functional breathing house. All right. Um, so start from scratch here. So at the very foundation, we've got posture relaxation. Um, and then I built the roof apparently with no, no columns. I don't know why I did it in this order. We use our nose and then the three columns light. And the analogy for light was, you know, imagining like kind of fog moving over a lake, you know, that's how slowly you want to pull that air in nice and light, low <clears throat> diaphragmatic, right. And then slow six breaths per minute, um, 5.5 to six breaths per minute on average. That's where we want to be. So that's sort of our, you know, that's our week one foundation right there with the functional breathing, the all day, every day. If you, you know, hopefully all night as well, um, you're there. All right. So what we'll do now is uh, the bolt measurement, the bolt score. So that stands for blood oxygen level test. Um, usually you do it sitting down. We'll just do it standing. It's fine. So the way this works is you're, you're testing the amount of seconds it takes for your brain to send a signal to your body to breathe. So this has nothing to do with like willpower. Um, you want to try to take that out of the equation. And, and basically your goal is can you, how long, how many seconds can you relax? Once your body has some sort of twitch mechanism to breathe, the test is over. You could easily keep going, um, but that's sort of not the purpose of this. So what I'll do is I'll just put the timer up so you can see it on the screen. Um, and I'll start it when you, um, when you pinch your nose. And the way this works is you inhale, you exhale, you pinch, and then you start the time. And then when that signal happens, that's the end of the test. You know, you could keep going, but you're just going to cut it there. So whenever you're, whenever you pinch, I'll start the timer. And your goal is just to relax. Good. All right. That's a good, that's a, that's a good score. So around 20, 21 seconds. So you did it after an exhale, right? Yep. Okay, good. I so think, actually I may have messed that up. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You're probably around 20 seconds anyways. Yeah. You want to go inhale, light inhale, light exhale, and then pinch, but don't worry about it. All right. So let's just call it 20 seconds. All right. And, and when you do this oxygen advantage training, um, the bolt score should improve from beginning of the session to end of the session. So it's a really easy way to like know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing is after we do some of these exercises, you try that again and you should get a couple extra seconds before that, that twitch happens. Um, all right. So first thing we'll do is uh, like a nose unblocking exercise. All right. This is just a really easy one you could do anywhere. Um, so it's the same premise, inhale, exhale pinch and then when we pinch this time we're just going to do like neck rolls so go forward backward you know get some rotations in so inhale exhale pinch and then while you're pinching you'll get those neck rolls in nice and slow exhale relax 
Yep, and then just slowly move. Yep. And then whenever you need to breathe, unpinch and breathe. Yep. The thing about this, and this is an interesting time to bring this up, I think just, it, it, you know, it seems it's counterintuitive, but what happens is if you think about the airway itself, um, if you pull air in really fast, the louder that it, uh, a noise that it makes, that's actually the airway constricting. It, it gets smaller. Um, so the harder you pull in, actually, you start, you start getting less air. Uh, oxygen to your muscle tissue. Whereas if you pull air in really slowly, it actually widens the, uh, the airway, you know? So when we, when we come to the end of the breath hold, when you unpinch and you breathe in, you want to try to breathe in slowly, even though your body is urging you to take in air very fast. So that's a big part of this training. All right. So now we get into the fun stuff. So I'm going to call this walk, jog, run. You could do it as a walk, jog, run. We're going to do it as like squats. So you think of squatting, bodyweight squats at like a walking pace. You know, here's our walk, nice and easy, right? And then when we hit the jog, you just kind of pick it up to here. And then when we hit that run, you're going like full speed, like speed squats. Okay, so you got those three different speeds. And this will be something that's like more of a time-based thing than a rep-based thing. So I'll tell you when to switch from, from walk to jog to run. And it'll all be on a breath hold, you know, so it's going to get a little bit uncomfortable. And at the end of that breath hold, you unpinch and breathe in slowly if you can. All right. So let's go on me, finish whatever exhale you have right now, finish an exhale and we'll go in two, three, four, out two, three, four, pinch and start the slow, casual squat. Just focus on good form here. Nice and easy. All right, start to pick it up to maybe a jogging pace. Yep. And then hit that sprint. Get a couple full speed, full speed, full speed, full speed, full speed. Good and breathe. Good. All right, and so now as you're catching your breath, you're focusing on trying to come back to that set position, that set functional breathing stage we started in. That's our starting position. That's our finished position. All right. We're going to do five sets. That's the key. Okay. The key with this oxygen advantage stuff is you do whatever, whatever you're going to do right now, we're doing a walk, jog, run. You do five sets. That's when your body starts to be like, okay, I think I know what you're trying to do right now. Your body's super confused. It's like, why the hell, why would you do that? You know um, it'll, it'll start to make more sense on set three, four, and five. So typically we'll do um, about 12 breaths, functional breaths before the next set. That takes a while. So we're kind of cutting the, the, the recovery down a little bit. So um, just keep that in mind. If you end up doing this on your own, you can, you can try to time out um, strategically how much rest you have so that you're fully back to your rested, you know, heart rate and, and all that good stuff. Uh, but we're probably going to push it a little bit. All right. So let's do on your own one more in and out nice and slow and then get going with that walking squat uh, you're using oxygen right now but you're not providing new oxygen so as co2 builds up hit that jog try to remain relaxed you might get a muscle contraction or two. Let it just kind of push through it. Whenever you're ready, hit that sprint. Yep, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. And whenever you need to breathe, breathe. Good. That's two breath. That's two rounds. Good. Yep. About that I'll, a lot sooner. Okay. Good. Yeah, because you probably didn't fully recover. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. So that's fine. That's something just to you know note for for your own training. Um, I was just going to say, oh, this is something I picked up from the martial arts. You know, when you get to that point, when you start breathing and like, um, like shit hit, shit hits the fan, you know, and this, this happens when, when we're training, this happens when we're playing and it's like, we get antsy, like maybe you're about to throw down with someone, whatever it is. Don't be, don't be jittery. You know, don't be jittery. If you need to wiggle something, wiggle your toes. 
If you need to squeeze something, squeeze your sphincter. No one can see that. You know, uh, the composure that it, that it, that it, uh, comes over you when you have the ability to just put it right here, you know what I mean? Bring it right here when you need to, uh, it sends a message to not only you, but to, to whoever is looking across from you, you're, you're composed. You're, you're not worried about anything right now. You're not antsy. You're not jittery. Um, something to think about. So for sets three, four, and five, we're going to add another layer to this. All right. This is the key when the, when we unpinch and we breathe in, we are in a surplus of CO2, right? We're, we're in a mild hypoxia at that moment. What we're going to do is we're going to do six breaths of minimal breaths, minimal breaths. So your body wants to unpinch and, and kind of slow itself down like that, right? But what you're going to do is you're just going to take in and it, maybe it's a fast because, you know, it is, it, you know, that first breath in is probably something like that, but don't like, like cut, cut it short when, when you can. So, so when you start to breathe in, cut it and then slowly exhale, you're going to, you're going to, that feeling of like CO2 buildup is going to maintain. And then you're going to take another, maybe short, but maybe it'll be a little easier to make it softer. The next breath, cut it short. So it's six breaths like that of minimal breathing. And the purpose is to prolong the hypoxic effect and prolong this hypoxic effect. So that's when we start to breathe at the end of the breath hold. All right. All right. So on your own, whenever you're ready, inhale, exhale, and we'll get going with that third set. Just focusing on form here for the first couple reps, nice and easy, good ground contact, good posture. Good, hit that jog pace. And even when you hit this sprint pace, maintain relaxation throughout the body. Hit that sprint, hit that sprint, good, breathe, good. And then cut it short. You can even hold here. You can start to breathe in and hold it for a couple seconds and then slowly breathe out and hold that for a couple seconds. And you'll feel that CO2 start to build back up. You want to start to understand this relationship of CO2 buildup. That's the key with oxygen advantage. So it's six breaths of minimal breathing, then return to functional breathing. All right. So that's the third set. You could tell your body's starting to get a little bit like, all right, I think I understand this a little bit, but it's still a little bit confused. Set four and five, it should really click. You know, not that it becomes easy, but your your mind and your body start to become in tune with, okay, I, I understand this threshold. You're understanding this CO2 threshold, and you're going to try to push the limits with it a little bit. Should give yourself three more breaths. Three more functional breaths should take about 30 seconds. And after that third breath, you know what to do. We'll hit that fourth set. Good. Bring your attention to the relaxation. Even if a contraction happens mid set, let it happen and then go back to relaxing. All right. Hit that jog and hit that sprint. Good, good, good. Now control the breath, control the breath. Good. Let that tension go. Remember the analogy of the, of the fog moving across the lake. See if you can pull air in so slow and then cut it short. Don't allow that full breath to happen. That's four sets. You know, this is where it happens. This is where the good stuff happens. This is where uh, quite literally you should feel more alert right now than you did 30 seconds ago. What happens is you have more blood flowing through your brain now this is, you know, this is one of the amazing benefits of oxygen advantage training is it brings this like calm, um, 
clarity into it. Like, like, you know, when you're, <gasps> you're hyperventilating and you're like going all out, you know, you're giving everything you got, but like, how's your decision making in those moments, right? Like this is where we want to be when we play sports, right? How you feel at the end of that set, when you start to gather yourself again, it's like, just like this clarity, you know, like it's, it's, it's not a, uh, this is a stressor. There's no doubt about it. You know, this is a stressor, but there's, there's a, there's a difference between this type of stress and say um, like a hyperventilation breath work, like Wim Hof, like, it's just very different. It's very different. All right. Maybe two more functional breaths and we'll get that fifth set in. Good. Yep, hit that jog. Good, hit that sprint. Push it, push it, push it. Good, when you need to breathe, breathe. Good, minimal breaths. Focus your attention. If you take one big one, that's fine, but go back to minimal breaths. Try to get six minimal breaths. You can take a little in and hold it. You can let it out and hold it. Prolong this CO2 feeling. Now your body's become accustomed to it. That's the fifth set. Now your body knows exactly what you're trying to do. And now it's up to your mind, you know, to really control it, right? So that's five sets. So just so you know, we would normally build up to this. We would do like five sets of just walking. And then we would do five sets of walking into jogging. And then we would do five sets of walk, jog, run like we did just now. All right. Um, it's time consuming, you know, it, and it's, it's a little bit meticulous, but it can turn into a little bit of a meditation thing. Um, right now, what you just did, like right now is a good time to like start working out or, or go for a run or do something Um you know, you're, you're primed, you're primed right now, your mind and body is ready to, to, to do whatever you needed to do. And, and of course, an athlete like yourself, you're, you're always kind of primed, right? But um, right at the end of these type of sets, where you really stress it on a breath hold, and then control your breathing afterwards, um, that the, the, the blood brain barrier is now being hacked a little bit, you're, you're, you're getting more blood flow to your brain in a, in a, in a good way, in a safe way. Um, all right. And then I'm just going to hit this last thing before we close up here. Um, tying in the breath with the movement, right? Everything up to this point, you know, last week, we kind of did those plank holds. But everything we've done up to this point is like, you hold your breath and you do some shit, and then you control your breath. But you know, real life is going to be breathe while you move, you know, um, like, again, you know, tying it back to the martial arts I'm learning. It's like Tai Chi is like, it's amazing, man. You know, like how it can, it can get you going. It can cool you down. Um, and so this is, this is kind of like, it's not like, it's not Tai Chi, it's fucking squats, but what we're going to do is tie in, um, functional breathing with a functional movement. So we're going to go four seconds on an inhale on the way down five seconds on an exhale on the way up, and then a one second pause at the top. All right, so we can do this one together, all right? So ready position at the top, and when I say in, that means start to go down, and in. Out. In. Three more in. Oh. In. Oh. On this last one, try to limit how much air you take in. In. Good. 
All right. We'll cap it there. All right. So that'll be the end of this session. Um, I do want to show you one thing, but I'm going to cut off this uh, recording. Thank you for being here. Thriller. Yes, sir.